Hi everyone, Pastor Nass from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lake Mills, Wisconsin. The longer I'm a pastor, the more I realize that so much of life is dealing with conflict between people. I think I knew that before, but being a pastor, I see this all the time in the church. There are people who just don't get along or in our society, I think all of us are sensing it this year. There's an awful lot of conflict between people. And the thing that's opened my eyes to is that then as I read the Bible, I see all over the place, the Bible talks about what a blessing it is to be united. And it encourages toward unity, it warns against the sins of causing conflict intentionally with other people. And so this week, I'd like to share with you five passages from the Old Testament that talk about unity. Maybe another week I'll come back and, and share some from the New Testament as well. But this week, five passages from the Old Testament that talk about what a blessing unity is and warn us against the opposite. So today, first one is, the very first one that comes to mind for me is Psalm 133. Let's begin today in the name of our God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I read the psalm, let me just tell you what to look for as I read it. Uh, look for how it talks about unity, but then there are two metaphors for what unity is like. Uh, so as I read, try to picture those for yourselves. They, they probably aren't the first things that you would have imagined of What's it like when people are united? Here's what Psalm 133 says. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there, the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. What a wonderful thing it is when people, and here especially when the people of God, live together in unity. And what would you compare it to? The first one in the psalm is this. It's like oil running down somebody's head and dripping on their clothes, which for us just sounds gross. Why would I want oil doing that? But if you look at it, it talks about this happening with Aaron. Aaron was the first high priest, the brother of Moses. And what's describing here is the ceremony of anointing the new high priest. There would be olive oil, perhaps in an actual horn off a ram or a cow. And that oil would be poured on top of that priest's head and it would run down his face and onto his, his clothing. And that oil was a sign of God choosing and putting that person in that in that office. And for Aaron, that meant here was the person who was going to stand between the people and God and offer the sacrifices and bring the prayers to God. When all the Israelites gathered around and anointed a new high priest, that was a day to celebrate. That was a good day. And Psalm 133 says, that is what it's like when God's people live together in unity. Uh, next one is, it's like the dew of Mount Hermon, which is a mountain in the northern part of Israel. Uh, it's a place where there often could be snow. You don't see snow much there. And a place that would have been a lot more moisture than where it often would have been arid. And so the psalm says, what's it like when God's people live together in unity? It's like the dew from Mount Hermon is there on God's mountain, Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Again, what a good thing. And the last line says this, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. And so the opening thought I'd like to leave with you this week is, I pray that you and I never get cynical when we see so much strife and conflict, as if unity is just a mirage or to say, oh, that could never happen. No, God says this is something that he does give as a blessing, and that when God's people live together in unity. That is a wonderful thing. Like the anointing of a high priest, the oil running down his face, like the dew of the mountains on Mount Zion. What a wonderful blessing from God. And so today, uh, let's just stop and say a prayer asking that God would pour out his blessing on us, and especially this blessing, uh, that his people would be united. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you today and ask for your blessing, especially the blessing of unity. We see so many things in this world that can divide, so many things that cause conflict, so many people who are against each other and angry at each other rather than working together. And so I pray today that you and your grace would give us a unity, uh, first of all, within, the, the, within our families. 
that husbands and wives, parents and children would, would get along. Pray too for the good of your church, that as we work together for the spread of the gospel, you would give us unity together and pray too for our country and for our world, uh, that you would let us be the salt and light of this, this world, that through us, uh, you would you would work a little bit of unity in so much chaos and so much discord around us. So I pray all that in Jesus' name and pray you'd bless us today. Amen. Go today with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.